Hello again, and welcome to Finding Sanctuary. This is a series of discussions between Buddhist nuns about the Terigata. The Terigata are poems composed by fully enlightened nuns at the Buddha's time. I'm Ayavimala Nyani, and with me today is again Venerable Munisala. Thank you so much for joining us today. Welcome. Our poem for today is a conversation between a bhikkhu and a bhikkhuni, who are mother and son. And um, I'm going to share my screen again so that people can see the poem. Can you see the poem, Aya? Yeah, I can see yes. it. Okay, so when you're ready, please go ahead and read out the poem. Buddha, please never ever get entangled in the world. My child, do not partake in suffering again and again. For happy dwell the sages, Vada, unstirred, their doubts cut off, cooled and tamed, and free of defilements. Vada, foster the path that the hermits have walked for the attainment of vision and for making an end of suffering. So that's Terry Gata 9.1, Vada's mother. This is the next line, the next line. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm trying. I'm trying to make a, a different voice. So oh, you can okay. Hear that this is the bhikkhu talking. Good, good. Mother, yeah. you speak with <laughs> such assurance to me on this matter. My dear mom, I can't help thinking that no entanglements are found in you. Vada, not a jot or a skerrick of entanglement is found in me for any conditions at all, whether low, high, or middling. All defilements are ended for me, meditating and diligent. I've attained the three knowledges and fulfilled the Buddha's instructions. Truly excellent was the goad with which my mother urged me on. Oh, with compassion, she spoke verses on the ultimate goal. After hearing her words be instructed by my mother, I was struck with righteous urgency for finding sanctuary. Striving, resolute, tireless all day and night, spurred on by my mother, I realized supreme peace. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. This is such a beautiful poem. I literally get goosebumps when I hear it because it has so many beautiful <laughs> lines. And again, we have the line about um, yeah. finding sanctuary yes. from the um, title of this series. Yeah. And then happy dwell the sages, uh -huh. the paths the hermits have walked, um, realizing supreme peace. I think it's just a really, really beautiful poem that you have picked here. So yes. maybe you can go ahead and share with us yes. your, your reasons for picking this poem. Right. What the what spoke to me about this poem was that um, was that this was a was a example of a mother teaching her child the Dhamma, and um, for me that that reminded me of my own life because I consider my first Dhamma teacher my mother because I was not living in a Buddhist country, even though my parents were Thai, we were, I was born in the Philippines and we were living there for most of my childhood. So the only exposure I could have to the Dhamma um, was through what my mother, what I saw my mother doing and what she actually told me or spoke to me about. So I remember even when I was a child, I, I remember her you know, reading Dhamma books or even reading um, the suttas and also speaking to me um, of things exactly like this. Like, I don't know, she actually said, my child do not partake in suffering again and again, but, but she did, yeah. she did, you know, kind of uh, speak of the suffering of samsara. And, um, and I, I kind of had a sense, I, 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 I mean, she never told me as much when I was a child, but you know how you, you can kind of just pick up on things and, um, I felt my mother probably would have wanted to become a nun, you know, if, and then sometimes you would just see her kind of have this sort of like, like, look at, look at, you know, I had my sister and I like her children and sort of be like, but I've got you, <laughs> you people, <laughs> you know, to look after. And so, um, and, you know, I never, I never felt bad about that. I, I, I felt like, oh gosh, I wish my mother could be a nun. You know, I wish, I wish that, uh, I wish that, that, this were available for her and um and I would totally get it you know I would totally get that this is like such an important thing to do with your life um and uh yeah 
I think also that um, she would have been happy to know that I became a nun. I mean, she passed away before I, I actually became a nun, um, but but I felt it was like no coincidence. It was very strange. I, I didn't pick the date, but the date of my going forth happened to be her birthday. Mm. You know, that there was some, some kind of connection there. And I felt if she had been there or if she was there as some deva or something, you know, she would have totally anumodana and mm. would have been very much, um, you know, happy that, that I, I took this path. And um, I feel like, you know, Imagine like, if your mother could give you the advice to become enlightened. Like we often, many people, they turn to their parents for advice, especially if you're a daughter, you know, you might look to your mother. And even if you were a son, you would look to your mother for life advice or, or they just teach you all sorts of stuff and practical things, you know. And um, imagine if your mother could teach you to be enlightened. Like, wouldn't, that would be like the most a may gift, you know, the may, the most amazing teaching that a mother could offer her child. Um, and how, and how, how cool would that be to have personal guru be your mother, you know, mm -hmm. to have your, your Tom teacher be your mother, uh, that, that itself would be such a special connection. Uh, because you, you know, I feel like often, there, there are many women who want to become ordained, you know, and they, they want to take, take their spiritual life more late. But then they feel that they, they have to raise their children, so they have to make sure they're okay, they're grown, everything. And even after they're grown, you know, sometimes you see ladies who are already quite a year, children already like 20s or even later, you know, and they, they still feel like, oh, but I, I can't, I can't make sure my, 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 they're okay. And I think the very, um, I guess, cultural and also social or whatever, um, expectation of, of women to, um, to, to, to take care of that duty in, in that way. And, um, and it's just sort of, for me, it was sort of eye opening to like, look at, when I when I went to look up who Vada is, you know, and you know, read the whatever the commentary said about this verse, it's like, oh, apparently, according to the commentary to a story, Vada's mother um, gave birth to Vada, and then not long after, she went off to ordain because she she was able to entrust Vada her kinsfolk, and she went off to strive for nibbana, and she did, <laughs> you know, and then she got it, <laughs> she became enlightened. <laughs> And only when Bhanda grew up, he became a monk, um, and she was able to teach him later. But that actually, it was okay for her to to um, to leave, even though he was only just newly born, and to to go and and become a nun and to to practice diligently and to, in the end, come back and be able to teach. Him. And so, I mean, I think like there's so many people they think like oh what a terrible mother she left her child when mm -hmm. she just, just newly born um and became a nun or something I mean uh, but it's like oh look here historically it happened she turned out to be good that actually she went off and was able to you know reach the highest goal and be able to teach him how to become enlightened so actually, wouldn't, wouldn't that be the greatest thing or the greatest mother could give her child? Mm. Like as long as the child had enough people to look after. I mean, even nowadays, like, you know, a lot of, in Thailand, lots of people who live in the provinces or rural areas, they, they have to go to Bangkok to work to, to earn a living. And so they leave the child in the care of the grandparent or some other relative and only see them, you know, once or twice a year or something. And that's totally okay. That's like totally mm -hmm. normal, totally acceptable to, you know, but if that same person went off to become a nun, they'd be like, oh my gosh, what a terrible person, terrible mother, you know, like, you know, you know, it's that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But what if, what if the mother was able to go off and become enlightened, teach the child that, as opposed to just going to Bangkok to earn a paycheck and, you know, feed and clothe her child. Um, I just feel like, wouldn't that be such like a greater gift? Uh, wouldn't wouldn't it be wonderful if more more people could be supported? Practice like that. 
Like, I think if, yeah, it, it's very hard to get around, but it reminded your head because we, we so much expect mothers to be there for their children when they're young. But if you think of the Buddha, I mean, he did exactly the same thing, right? You know, Rahula is like this new and babe goes off, off I go to strive for, for, for freedom and enlightenment. And, and he does, and he comes back and he's able to teach Rahula to, to, be, to, be, um, to be enlightened. And so this poem called that to mind. It was sort of like the female version. I mean, of course, it's a whole different level if you become the Buddha, you know, and to become the Buddha. But it's pretty good. But the Buddha, the Buddha was able to also, well, after he traveled as a young newborn babe, he went off and he strove and he, you know, was able to be enlightened and able to share that with his child and to the power of that teaching was what helped his child to become enlightened. And so seeing an exact, you know, other um, doing what's atypical, which is not to be there for her child, said, you know, being it, clothing it, being there while it's young and raising it the normal way, but to leave the home, but come back and and lead the child to enlightenment. I think I was, oh, I remember I was going to say that I, if I reflected on my own life, I guess, yeah, I, I would probably feel a loss if I didn't have my mother there with me as I was growing up. Mm-hmm. But if mm-hmm. later on in life, she was able to come back and teach me to be enlightened, maybe it would have been worth it. Like, even if you have your mother by your side, especially as you get older and you face difficulties in life and bring inside your own, you found that having the mother physically right next to you couldn't solve it, you know? I mean, it was, it's nice and I appreciated the moral support that a mother can provide. At the end of the day, the suffering in your own mind uh, no matter what their best intentions, if, if, if your mother isn't enlightened, she's not going to really be able to help you get out of that. If, if, if your mother is not fully enlightened, she can only teach you what, she, you know, whatever level that is. And maybe that does help a lot of people to some level. Um, but if for complete freedom, all suffering, no, I guess your mother has to be like your mother has to be enlightened. So, um, so I guess of course there. But it was just really just just sort of amazing to see this example of that happening in somebody's life, and be able to actually encourage them on the path, but also show them the way, and also the power of their own realization somehow is able to be transmitted to their child, possibly because of their close connection, and not, or maybe just possibly because of the power of their own attainment, being able to convey that deep understanding of the Dhamma, and also urging, you know, hey, I've done it, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. and now you go and do it. That's so powerful. Seeing a mother urging their child to more than just worldly achievements, mm-hmm. you know, more than just going to school, studying hard, getting a job, getting married, having nice grandchildren for me, that kind of thing. Uh, but don't, <laughs> don't get entangled in the world. It's really refreshing, you know? Yeah. Wouldn't, you, wouldn't that have been cool if your mother had advised you like that? Yeah. And also, so, um, but I think my mother did, you know, in her own way. I think that's what she, that's, that's the message I got from her. So I, I appreciated that. I appreciated that my mother never, ever said, oh, go and get married. Uh, have grandchildren for me, uh, you know, like she never did that. And neither did my father, actually. Mm-hmm. So I feel very, very grateful yeah. that my parents never encouraged me to get entangled in the world. They didn't necessarily go off and, you know, become a nun, but, mm-hmm. but they, they did, they didn't, they didn't encourage me in the wrong direction, at least. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so yeah. to see that in this poem, you know, it really was very, uh, I guess, just very, rare I find experience in the world when you talk of, when you see other people come to the monastery or you see other nuns who are ordained I mean so many times their parents don't get it or they're, they're not that happy with it or mm. you know, they're, you know yeah. but there, there are times when they are and the, in the cases where the parents are very supportive and 
and really get it. You feel you feel so uplifted that that's wonderful mm -hmm. when parents encourage their children on this path and um, to 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 give that that priority and importance to the spiritual spiritual life. Mm -hmm. I think that's very it's very um it's very beautiful to see mm -hmm. parents do that because it's basically giving up of their own hopes and expectations of the child to do stuff for them as their parent, you know, to be there next to them or whatever. So, so it's very, um, it's very beautiful. I think for both sides to be able to do that for each other, to, to, to just support anybody who wants to take up a spiritual life and to, um, to, for, for people to be encouraged to do that, um, I think is, is one of the pieces that, that spoke to me from this poem. And also the fact that when, when people do take it seriously, they are able to, to be enlightened and then, and then able to provide something really, yeah, just so rare in the world. So if mother, more mothers can be <laughs> encouraged to take up the spiritual life or, or that it can be considered, you know, something that they're not frowned upon for doing, I always find that very, very beautiful to see. Like, even though my own mother has passed away, I always feel very happy when I see other of the nuns mothers stay at the monastery. Or when I see um, sometimes lay people come together as a team, mother-daughter team, and they come and stay at the monastery. Mm. And I always find that such a beautiful thing that, that mother and child share that. That this is this is a spiritual undertaking they're doing together. That they share that 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 interest and that and that commitment to the practice. And so, I think that that's actually that's a that's a um, you know we we don't often see this portrait of mother child relationships like this, but that that is a very a very beautiful one. And I I really um, I really. I guess was touched or moved by this poem because of that, to see that happening for a mother and child, whether it's mother and son or mother and daughter. Um, it's still really just an amazing thing to, to see happen in the world. And so, so I, I feel like if we can, yeah, wouldn't it be great if more, <laughs> more mothers and children walked hand in hand in the Dharma, <laughs> and, you know, and, and like obviously there is some karmic connection that causes people to be born as parents and children, but how powerful a connection were utilized for both sides reaching the goal and you know coming to the end of suffering as we have in this film. Mm -hmm. It's like hurrah for Vada's mother, so hurrah for Vada. And and how much more that the both of them now can go off and benefit all sorts of people who may or may not be biologically related to them. Mm -hmm. So this is something that um yeah, I felt was very uplifting. And so that, you know, whatever we do, you know, parents can benefit from our spiritual life. And also whatever striving parents do on their spiritual path can benefit their children. And to have this be um, a way of giving to our parents and giving to our children that is, is I guess, given more weight in, in our just our normal dealings with family or relationships that this piece be there you know and and be highlighted and that and that that's yeah wouldn't that be wonderful if that if that did so so that's that's one other thing i wanted to say about this poem. sadhu 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 when you have these seeds planted mm -hmm. as a child yeah. then you know you have this solid basis and your dhamma practice can really grow so i think you you were in a really lucky position yeah and also one other thing I found very special yes, about, about this poem is that here we have one example of a nun teaching a monk. And that's very rare actually in the Pali Canon. Usually it's the other way around that the monks are teaching the nuns. And, <laughs> but but we, we can really see, you know, it's not a one-sided relationship. In the early Sangha, the, they supported each other and whoever was the, the more advanced one was teaching the, the younger one. And... Um, you know, monks had yes. monks accepted teachings from nuns, and they were so inspired, and they were so willing to practice, and then they, they, they achieved enlightenment because of the teaching from the nuns. So I thought that was a very, very beautiful aspect of this poem as well. Mm. Yes. Well, it probably helps if that, if that nun was your mother. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, that is a that is a 
you're right, a sort of rare occurrence. And um, yeah, it's, it is a nice example of that. And that it worked. <laughs> it's effective. Okay, I think we have come to the end of today's video. This is the last poem that we discuss mm -hmm. in the series of Finding Sanctuary. So today will be the last episode. Mm -hmm. um, if our viewers have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section. We are going to answer them all in our live stream. And once again, Aya Munisara, thank you so much for joining us. Um, it was such a privilege to have you today. You're welcome.